still hear it in my mind, like where I can hear him, like I don't have, I, 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 like so as this guy swinging at me trying to stick me, I hear my homie straight up getting stick. No. One, one, one. Welcome to the Beautiful Day podcast. You know, we traveling for these podcasts. We going crazy. I just got back from Arizona, filming Jaws, and now I'm straight over here to Ventura. Film, what is it? Ventura or Santa Paula? Uh, oh, Santa Paula. Santa Paula. Uh, we, it's uh, like five minutes from Ventura. Five minutes. Pretty much the same shit from what I know from being in LA. Uh, <laughs> no disrespect, but that's like an hour, two hours away from me, depending on traffic. So we traveling, y'all. So if y'all tuning in right now, subscribe. And today... We are with, and I'm gonna say it wrong, because I always say it wrong. All right, let's see. Kabbalah. Ka- no, no, no. You no, taught no me say, earlier. say the way you did it. We say, was uh, Kabbalah. First, say the way you did it. Kabbalah. All right, can't even speak right. <laughs> Kabbalah, right? Close. How do you say? You're it? Almost there. Kabayo. Now he told me it meant something, and it was some crazy ass shit. What, what did it mean? Um, horse. It's just horse in Spanish. I thought you said whores. No horse. <laughs> horse. You know, stallion. Yeah. Explain why that's your name. Um, well, when I was in, well, I've had it multiple times when I was in elementary and then I got it again in middle school, I had a mohawk yeah. and the day I got plaqued by it though, was that we're at my, um, cousin's house. And at the time we all had a friends that had different nicknames and his stepdad came in the living room and right away he looks at like all of us, like, you know, well, all of us, like we're 11, 12 years old. And, uh, he right away names it down the chain. Oh, look at you, froggy, chino, orphan. <laughs> And then, just roasting and then, all like, y'all? Yeah, and at the time, I didn't have the name, like, Caballo. He just looks Damn. at me, and pinche Caballo. Damn. And then I was just like, and then everyone, instead of, like, like just talking shit to him, they all start roasting me. Yeah. I was just like, oh, all right, I see how it is. And <laughs> Who the fuck was called an orphan? That's fucked up. <laughs> Can they call a nigga an orphan? <laughs> he was a homie. He was a big, uh, uh, he was a little homie, but um, it was just because he was always the homie that was spending night at all our houses, but because he lived between Piru and Fillmore, so like he wasn't in town like he literally had to get dropped off in town so like yeah. after school he would stay with us or whoever it would be yeah. but he had a place he was good good and you he say pyru up. so is that where you from <laughs> yes that shit pyru, crazy to us all right pyru california before yeah. anyone thinks anything crazy about that too <laughs> i was, uh there's one homie uh i don't know if you ever heard of him jose uh he's from compton Jose Vega or something like that. His nickname was Black Pluga or Pluga. Sound he had funny. crazy switch trays. Like I think I know a, anytime about. you ever see like at like pop up events or like one out, you see him either switch tray or nolly tray yeah. like sets. Like, I think I know you talking he about. He had a I'm mustache, a fro. Yeah. Shout out to him. He was, always gave me love from the beginning. He was cool yeah. as fuck. Um, <laughs> he uh, um, hold up. He said, "I got a drink for this one." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he pressed you about being from Pyru or claiming Pyru? Yeah. No, no, I was like, because uh, it was uh, two times, because it was multiple times I brought it up, but he, uh, at Brandon Beeble's Park afterwards, we're talking and stuff, and then he brought it up. Um, that was like, oh, where are you from? And I was like, I'm a, um, I'm from Pyru. And he's like, wait, hold up. And I was like, wait, wait, no, 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 none of that type stuff. Like, I'm from Pyru, California. Uh, it's uh, Viter County. And he's like, oh, you know what? Like, word of advice, just say you're from Ventura County. Don't say yeah. you're from Pi- Piru, and especially, like, out here. In Compton. And I was like, tripping. oh, fuck. No, no, no. This wasn't in Compton. Uh, no, no. I'm saying that guy was from there, but no. Yeah, yeah. This happened outside. Have you ever been to Brandon Beagle Skate Park? No. Wait, yes. The Like, they say the Nike Park. Were they doing a te- test in the Nike shoes in there? I believe so. I think so. Yeah, I've been there. That's just cool. That's that was cool. a good part, but yeah. it was after a session of there, yeah. and uh, we had that little conversation in that area. I think that was in the valley or somewhere, yeah. but um, that's where we had the conversation, and that was a little funny one. How did you fail after he tells you that? <laughs> I actually took that in consideration because I never thought about that. Like, I never actually, like, because I'm not affiliated like that where I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm not going to do none of that stuff, but mm-hmm. obviously hearing out there, they don't know there's a town called Pyru, so yeah. it's a little... You know, you got so you're actually from Piru, but you ain't from Piru, which is crazy <laughs> as hell. Something happened with me similar to that. Uh, something happened to me similar with that. Uh, you know, Rafael Perez. Dude, what's crazy? I looked up to that dude growing up. That yeah. guy, he's another guy who I watched videos of. He's like crazy. Barrel yeah. Hill flip shout out. And do you ever watch that video, Killing Times? I think so. That's like an old video. All these like LA kids like were hitting 18, 16 stairs. Yeah, like, this nigga insane. was jumping off the craziest shit. Yeah. But so I was with him. I had nowhere to go one time. So I hit him up to stay at his house. And then um 
this nigga so out of nowhere was like hey we going to a party down the street now he lived in south central right yeah and i was sponsored by primitive at the time and it had all the p's on it like the logo the primitive yeah, p logo primitive, and yeah. that's pyru but where, where he stayed at can't be rocking all that shit. We stepped out, long story short, some niggas walked out with a machete saying, you ready? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then I had to tell them, I was like, oh, nah, this, nah, this ain't that. And they just went back in the car and I was thankful as hell, nigga. Oh no, yeah, that's a little and scary. And I see Raphael anywhere. I'm like, nigga, where was you at? <laughs> I was about to get chopped up. <laughs> but nah, probably really crazy for that. But um, I got a lot of questions for you today. And um, I'm excited. Because you have a crazy ass story and we're going to get straight to that story right now. Nah, you know what? It's about the barracks, y'all, as the title is telling y'all. And he's <laughs> going to explain everything. We mentioned it in the Brian Arnett channel. Did I yeah. explain it kind of correctly or not? Nah? There's a lot of things missed. Like, same with Brian's video. Like, yeah. he made the video. And um, I wish I would have been able to have a little input where I just give a little more detail on it. Yeah. But it's cool. I appreciate him because, like, he's the first person to ever give light on it. Yeah. I fucking have much love for that dude. Real Shout naked. out Brian Arnett. Yeah. Much love, little big homie. Yeah. <laughs> that was tall as shit. Yeah. But um, yeah, and then you talked about it with Jubert as well. Oh, okay. You brought it up like briefly. Well, we're gonna get into detail, but first I want to ask you other questions. So you from here? When did you get into skating? I was, I believe it was the like beginning of sixth grade. Yeah. How old was um, that? Like fourteen? That, nah, that's like high school, bro. That's fourteenth high school. Oh, I was. Shit, like, I don't know nothing. <laughs> I was uh, 11 years old. A uh, little funny little story about my first board. Like, um, the guy that we saw earlier at the at the bar, Froggy, him and his little brother were going through my garage looking for marbles. And um, marbles. they end up finding a, <laughs> they find a skateboard. Like, you skate? And I was like, you know I don't skate. And they're like, well, there's a skateboard right here. I was like, oh, cool. Well, you know, there's a ramp up the street. Like, let's go get it. <laughs> Damn, what the fuck? So we busted a little lick. We, The three of us. But it was like, Think about it. Two 11-year-olds and a fucking eight-year-old. All obvious. We're all like, we passed the house and we know there was a wooden ramp in the front yard. So we pass it, we come back and then we just grab it and we're just laughing, running down the street. <laughs> and literally it's like maybe 10, 11 houses down on the opposite side. Yeah, laugh the whole just, way. We're trying to, yeah, we're laughing the whole way, like cracking up like, oh, we got it, we got it. <laughs> and we try to learn how to skate that first day yeah. and it didn't work out. Yeah. But eventually um, we... uh would use the board, just get an A to B, do this and that. And um, it wasn't until like maybe midway of sixth grade that we started like actually messing around with it. And then mm -hmm. from there, I remember learning, uh, do you ever see those, um, on, it was on TV, it was a little, with Mike Villele skate school, like the trick I think tips. I know you're talking about, was it on Fuel TV? Yeah, Fuel TV, yeah. I Fuel miss TV, Fuel Mike TV, Villele. bro. Captain and Casey show. Yeah. So I never yeah. knew about skating or anything. And I came across that and I was like, oh, like you could do tricks on this. Yeah. I just knew about like I could ride it. And like, you know, I, and then I, when I seen that, like him teaching how to ollie and kickflip, I was like, that looks cool. I was like, let me see if I could do that. And I just started focusing on that every day after school. But I was very shy about this, about things like that. Like I just never like said like, oh yeah, I skate. It was just doing on the low yeah just fucking around and then eventually like once I learned how to ollie it was just one ollie and after that I was just like I came out the shower I just started I, about my, say, I came out the shower uh, <laughs> <I'm tripping. laughs> I came out my shower like yeah. I started taking my board to school I started skating I was like it is what it is like yeah. I'm, I want to learn how to do this And it was how like, long did it take you to do the ollie you said like two months two months two months because the first like two months I was just riding it I didn't yeah. even know you could do tricks on this thing <laughs> and like when I saw the video, like the field TV on Mike Villele, I was like, yeah, like oh, damn, like, that's cool. All right. Like, I'm going to try to do something that worked out. So since you used to, got inspired by him, did you want to do old school tricks at that time? Yeah, because there was this, I never learned it because I don't know how to do a handstand, <laughs> but yeah. it was, uh, I think this is one famous move. Like he does that like handstand back flippy to make twist. I don't know what it yeah. is, but no disrespect, Mike Villele, you're beast as fuck. Mad props, but like, um, it was something like that. And like the closest I was able to do was the bird slide. <laughs> like, you know what that is? Like, what is it? You put your hand, like, say you're riding straight and then you just put your hand down and do like a power slide back. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I used to do like, that shit. Yeah. So that was like the only like old school thing I knew how to do at the time. He was on Element at that time, right? Or was he on some other shit? I'm trying to think. Then what boards were we busy on? Mm, I can't wait. Really... I think it was Element, right? Was it? Yeah. Possibly, so then? was Element like your 
favorite company then coming up or what was your favorite companies? Dude, honestly, I didn't know companies when I first started skating. Like, no. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, like, at the time, I didn't even know what board he was riding. Fine. My first board, the only reason I know it, because the name on it, it said mini logo. Like, I know my first complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a mini logo with Grind Kings. But at the time, I didn't know skaters. I didn't know companies. You was just my, doing it. Yeah, my, one of my close friends, uh, shout out Robert Talbot. I don't know if you ever see this or not. I don't know whatever happened to him. He moved out of town, young Damn. age. But um, he's one of my biggest inspirations, like, when I first started, because he was the guy that knew how to skate mm -hmm. and he would skate but he told me lies obviously i found out later <laughs> like what the well they weren't bad lies yeah. they were just like the local skaters that were in town like so for example shout out big art i thought he was a pro skater when i was a kid you homie right there yeah hell yeah because of my homie he yeah. said like there was a, a group called oki skate and yeah. i was like um colin harding chris leone art rodriguez matt Costas, and I didn't know what pro skaters were. I thought mm -hmm. these guys were pro skaters. Yeah. That's what my friend told me. So, so you every, thought they like, was like rich as fuckers, huh? In a way. Like <laughs> I was like, I see them skating and I'm like, damn, you guys are good. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Like I would be shy around them. I was just like, I wouldn't really skate. And then yeah. it took a minute to skate around those guys. But um, those guys are the who I thought were pro skaters. Okay. Well, I still believe they are because they pro at it. They have fun with it. So then when did you start really getting into skate companies and then what became your favorite skate companies? That wasn't until... I say like eighth grade because I started in sixth grade and by eighth grade I knew about skaters. Okay. And by then I would say Plan B. Plan, Plan B, B is one of them because of P Rod. And um let me see. P Rod and T Pud, he was on the team at that time, right? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I wasn't a fan of I yeah. T Puds is sick, but yeah. at the time he wasn't like a fan favorite. Like I was yeah. I would say P Rod and well P Rod one uh is on Plan B, but I'll say P Rod and or fuck. I'll say um, Plan B and Venture, yeah. for sure. Plan B, Venture, and Bones Wheels. I hated Skate Adventures, bro. That shit was too heavy for me at that time. Well, I should also say Venture Hollow Light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a Hollow Light guy. <laughs> I can't... Well, I could, but I prefer the Hollow Lights. I get yeah, way more pop. Yeah, I mean, everybody was fucking with Venture. So, okay. Um, so, Plan B, what else? Mm. Like, shoe-wise? Oh, for sure, shoes, Nike. At, or no, no. At that time, I'll say, like... Vans. It was uh, Chuckalos. The Chuckalos were for sure. Those were my favorite. I got almost every color. Damn. Every color, every style. I think the favorite were the the white, the white tips with the, like, the they were white and black and then, like, with the um, the threading was a little red. Uh, I hated mean? Chuckalos, bro. How did you skate that? They were the sickest shoes ever. I like the pointy shoe, that old yeah. school style. Your feet sick. are different than mine. My shit is point. Man, I'm not pointing. My shit is flat. Pause. <laughs> uh, but uh, okay, then who who are your favorite skaters now? Or no, who are your favorite skaters then? And who are your favorite skaters now? So you said P Rod, obviously. But okay, so back then I would I'll say P Rod, Nigel Houston. Mm -hmm. um, mm, P Rod and Nigel Houston probably the only ones. Okay. To be honest, like That's I didn't know ones. many skaters. Those were the only two. Man. Like Nigel, I just remember a little kid with dreads. Going I was like, stupid. oh damn, yeah. <laughs> I think his first video was "This Is My Element." That was like the one that I yeah. first seen. And I used when to be I was so in, jealous watching this shit. When I was in middle school, I would see that, and like that was the only way I was able to watch it because YouTube was blocked. But I found a way to watch it. I found Element.com, and yeah. they had the videos on their page, so yeah. I was able to watch skate, video, skate videos in school. Fuck. I have one tablet of my assignments and the other tablet of element.com. So I'll go back and forth mm. and I'll make sure I'll see the teacher coming. I'm like, oh, shit, switch it back. Yeah. That's fucking crazy as hell. So let's fast forward it a little bit. Um, did you get sponsored at all? Were your sponsors at the time? What was your first sponsor, you know? I would say when I was a sophomore i got hooked up by a local skate shop called one way board shop mm -hmm. but i was never officially on the team or anything it was more of a homie hookup but so i was like when i was 15 and then when i was 17 one of my homies he made his first um is this too low or yeah you can fix that a little bit yeah. Yeah. um the oh shoot yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. The, that homie that we ran like into this. panchito he started his company i had a homie named panchito too I That's think every, everyone got a homie <laughs> named Panchito crazy. straight up. <laughs> if their name's Francisco, most likely. <laughs> well, I had that homie that had his own company, Stay Lifted. Yeah. Uh, shout out to him because he gave me my first legit sponsor where he would give me product as an apparel, right. uh, headwear, shirts. And um, 
he um he also made me a welcome video. It was pretty cool. Like That's he actually right. like went out. We filmed a, f- a few clips, mm-hmm. and that was real sick. Mm-hmm. And then that was when I was seventeen. And then also I got on a local butter shop. That was actually uh, I got on Revolution. That was pretty cool. That's a cool name. Yeah. Shout out to James Martin. He's the one that actually got me put on. Yeah, yeah. I want. They How'd had, you get on that? How did he get you on that? You said to sponsor me or what? Nah. Uh, they would always have game. I'm one for game of skates. Like, yeah. Wow, that's why we're gonna talk about the bears. But like, yeah, we go lo- speak like, on it. Like locally, like, like ever since I was 13, I, I won almost every game of skate out here in Ventura County. Like I won a lot of them. That's a flex. And uh, uh, at the Revolution one, by the time I was like already 16, 17. Yeah. I started winning those. I won, I think it was like two fifty or five hundred dollars. I won. Yeah. The next one, it was like a hundred, and this last one, I remember, I won with the two last. I remember the whole tricks, but the two last tricks, I remember I did a late three shove it. I got the guy on T, and then I won him on switch one eighty. Wait, 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 wait. A late three shove it. Yeah. On, on flat? flat. Yeah. This nigga crazy. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, I did a late three shove it on flat, and then the last trick I beat him on was switch one eighty late flip, like switch front one eighty front foot flip. <laughs> And uh, he was pissing niggas off, I bet. <laughs> it was yeah. just going crazy. So, That's some crazy shit to lose. That's um, impressive. I won on that one. And then afterwards, like on that game, I won $100 plus some product. And uh-huh. right away, I won 100 bucks. I'm going to go buy a skateboard. I went inside yeah. the shop and uh, I picked a real skateboard. And the homie's like, uh, well, he wasn't the homie yet, but James yeah. Martin's like, um, uh, you ride for anything? It's not. I was like, nah, nah. I, I mean, I ride for my friend's company, but I don't ride for a shop. He was, oh, that's cool. Like, would you ride for us? And I was like, I mean, yeah, like that would be cool. Like, <laughs> Fuck yeah. I wish. And he's like, "All right, well, I already talked to the, I already talked to the owner. Like, you, um, let's go tell him that you, you want to be in." I was like, "I'm just like, I'm just kind of like on, like, <laughs> wait, for real? Are you messing with me? Like, nah." And he's like, "Yeah, let's go. Like, like, don't buy this board yet. Let's see if we get a comp for you." And I was like, "I didn't know what that meant." So I was like, "Okay, I'm not gonna buy it. I'll wait." Yeah. And he go up to him, and apparently they did discuss this already. And he goes, "Um, he just right away as soon as we get to the owner, he goes, hey, he's in." Oh, welcome to the fam, brother. And I was just like, oh, dope. I was like, all right, cool, cool. <laughs> and right away, uh, the home, uh, James Martin goes, wait, can we comp him the first board, though? Like, he was about to buy this. He was like, yeah, we could comp it. Just get the skew on the on the, on the yeah, bar, you yeah. know? I was like, oh, sick. So he right away, you know how they do that? They take out the little price tag, so they bring yeah. it up. So I got my first board, got on a shop, and they took care of me pretty well. Fuck yeah. What did you do after that? You go home and start screaming? Tell your mom? What? Well, um... We took the bus there, and then we drove. Uh, well, we skated over the freeway, went to um, In and Out, and then our friend's mom picked us up. I was just like to all my homies, like, dude, what, like, what just yeah. went down? Like, you yeah. know, realize, like, I, I just won this. Now I, now I'm sponsored. Like, yeah. and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we just went home, celebrated. We just kept skating for the day because on Go Skate Day too. Because usually they always had the game of skates on Go Skate Day. Yeah. That's fire. I was checking the cameras and shit. Like I said, it's the Beautiful Day podcast. We is not professional over here. Forgot to charge the batteries. Uh, no, that's sick. That's a good ass story. How long did that board last? How, I mean, how often were they giving you boards? Every month. That's cool. And um, it was pretty cool because uh, for a while, it was just like the shop decks, which wasn't a problem. They were good as uh, any yeah. board. And then once that barrack situation happened, like when I got like in the light a little bit, mm-hmm. they started giving me any board I wanted. That's fine. And I was like, cool. So I would always pick Deluxe Distribution. I love their wood. Perfect freaking wood. Pause, pause, love that. Pause, pause nation, but yeah. No, so like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. some some boards got, you know, flimsy ass wood and that. No, I, I, I wrote some uh, and pause, apparently some like boards. active boards or, well, that's whole something different because I ended up going to active after Rev. Yeah. But Which active was you on? Active Oxnard. Okay. Swank was on it too at first when I got on he it. He was on the one way over here. <laughs> This nigga. <laughs> he about. was on Active Oxnard and he lived in, uh, I think, Santa Clarita. Yeah, he tripping. Uh, we, I want to get to the barracks. I do want to get to speaking about the barracks. But first, I got to ask these other questions. So, what are some struggles you dealt with growing up where you're from? And that's Santa Paula, right? Yeah, like, uh, I say I'm from Peru, but I grew up in Santa Paula. Okay. Growing up anywhere, depending on, like, if your family's in this or that, like, yeah. you know, you're going to be, you're going to get some backlash on it. Mm-hmm. But if you're not involved with it, you're never going to deal with it. And, you know, I had some family members and some things and um, it was always around you, I like, guess, in like yeah, affiliated, uh, that yeah. gang life and people doing certain things. And 
it can influence you really a lot. And as a kid, I kind of, I didn't like really know too much of it. I just more like idolize it. Like, oh, they, I like the way they dress. I like the way they're doing things. And I was like falling in that footstep. And it wasn't until like I started skating, I started realizing, seeing the real truth of it. Like, yeah. it made no sense. Cause in sixth grade, like during school, people were like, all right, these guys are from this area. They would hang out over here. These guys from this area, they hang out over here. They don't associate, they don't talk to each other. But after school, we all skating together in the, mm-hmm. in the in the neighborhood. Yeah. But then we get to school and no one's talking to each other. So like in sixth grade, I had that mentality because like my uncles are from here. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be from here too. I'm gonna do that thing. I'm gonna talk mm-hmm. to you. I'm not gonna associate with you. Yeah. And seeing that though, like it confused me. Well, like we don't talk in school, but outside of school we do talk. Mm. And so by seventh grade, like I kind of phased out of that, just being going to that skater phase. Yeah. But those things were like very confusing. On top of that, like the guy that my mom got with when I was very young. Yeah. He was uh think about the most stereotypical, bald headed, buffed up, tattered Mexican in and yeah. out of prison. Yeah. And it sounds scary as hell. Yeah. And like I grew up seeing that dude like beating on my mom's. Mm-mm. And uh he's, sorry to hear like, that. I remember I was eight years old coming down the hallway. He just has hands on the counter. My mom, mind you, she's pregnant with my little sister. No. And he's like, boom, 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 give him some kicks. I don't know what to do. So I I run out the door. I run down the hallway. I got yeah. my little sister at the time who was like six. Yeah. I jump out the window and I run to my homie's pad. And uh, it was actually the friend who we saw at the at the bar, Froggy. I oh, ran for to, real? I ran to his pad. Damn. And uh, I called my uncle, called my, well, the dad that raised me, which is my sister's dad. Yeah. And um, I tell him like, hey, you know, come through. Da, da, da. They come, you know, they do what they do. Yeah. But my mom ended up being with him for a while. And... They uh, they stayed together up until I was like, twenty, probably like two years ago, three years ago. They, mm-hmm. About three years ago, they finally broke off. Damn. But so growing up, I was a pissed off kid. Like I had a lot of hate and a lot of resentment towards both of them. Of course. But even though like me and him never got along, he was good to my sisters. He was always good to them. Okay. So I can't say anything on that. Uh, as he got older, obviously, he kind of neglected them. That's how things finally ended off. But to them, like, he was good. So I want to make that straight. Like, mm. if anyone tries to say, like, oh, why your mom be with him for so long? But, like, it just was me and him didn't get along. Yeah. And one thing that really messed me up when I was younger was that um, in middle school, right when I started skateboarding, when I was like, uh, six year, uh, in sixth grade, yeah. from sixth to eighth grade, I moved about 22 times. And 22 times, yeah. I counted it like last time we're talking at the me and big, yeah. we're talking at the park about it, and like I tallied it up. So, what will you be moving to like different cities or just home? Same, uh, Pyru to back and forth, yeah. so Pyru to Fillmore, but it was just different family members. Sometimes I'll run to a friend's house, and like, yeah. it was just uh, me myself because I just was kept running away. I just didn't want to. How do you think that effect, affected you now, like mentally? Um, well, now I've made amends with a lot of things. Like, that's one thing I made sure, like, uh, me and my moms, we good. We on, like, I'm honest with everything. I always talk to her. Yeah. And uh, I've already told her I forgave her. It is what it is. Because also, she was a young mom. She got she had me when she was 17. Yeah, that's so, tough. Yeah. And I grew up single mom, just my moms. Yeah. So I also, like, no matter what, that's my only one. So mm. um, I right away, we made amends. We good. And even with that guy, even, like, after all that thing, like, all the shit we went through, like, I don't want to hold hate in my heart. I don't want to hold that against him. I don't want him to be able to have that against me. Like, mm. so I made it, even though we not cool, I still told him I forgive him. It is what it is. Like, I don't, I don't want that hate. I want to be able to be good. I want to be happy. That's real big of you, bro. And yeah. We still don't talk to this day, but still, like, if I see him, I'll be like, hey, how's it going? Like, yeah. I'm not going to, I'd rather, you know, we be good. And what got you to that point to finally be like, I'm going to just let it be and forgive him? I was at a like really breaking point. Like I got really depressed. Like I've been, I've dealt with depression for a long time. All mm-hmm. this like bullshit. Yeah. And I finally acknowledged, like you know what? Like, why am I so angry? Why am I so pissed off? Why have I been so like for so long? Mm-hmm. And I look back, and it was a lot had to do with those two things. Yeah. But, like my mom's and him. And with my mom's to make amends, that's easy. But with yeah. him, that was like, how can I forgive him for any of, of that? Of course, yeah. And finally, I was like, you know, it is what it is. And I told him how I felt. And he did what he do, like, and 
one thing that's hard, you can't really tell a gangster like certain things. Like they're not gonna listen. You can't tell they're them gonna, shit. Yeah, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. They're gonna act how they act, and no yeah. one's gonna come at them. Yeah, it's like whatever. Trust me, I know. Man, I'm sorry that you had to deal with that, but you really a bigger person for you know what I'm saying forgiving and whatnot. How do you think that started helping you now? The fact that you. I'm point. easy at letting go things. As yeah. a kid, I would hold grudges, resentment, mm -hmm. and I'd be looking for an excuse to fight in a way, like, oh, mm -hmm. whatever, I'll, I'll you know, like, that ain't no problem, let's do this, let's do that, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm just like, I don't want no problems, I don't yeah. want no beef, yeah. I, don't, like, I don't want hate, like, yeah. I've been mad. Like, yeah. I want to be happy. I want to enjoy what the time I have left. Like, Real shit. Who knows? Like, no one knows the time you're going to go. And, like, when you lose people and stuff, like, that opens your eyes a lot. Like, like you don't want to, like, rather enjoy this time being happy, enjoy the people you're Because life is you. short, man. Life is short. And I'm glad you're realizing that shit now or w when you realize it. And that's yeah. amazing. Ah, damn. But, um, I mean, get all deep and stuff. It's nah, just, speak I have your positive truth. things to talk about. I have positive things to talk about, definitely. There's just things that people, you know, go through, not really want to talk about it. And yeah. it's better to just talk about it. Because when you hold things in, that's when things get bad. Yeah. And before the battery dies, I want to speak on the barracks thing. Because battery might die and we might have to charge it. That's just whatever, one, one, one. But um, uh, tell me about the whole barrack situation. <laughs> it's coming from you. You know yeah. what I mean? A lot of people have been speaking about the barracks and talking about your story and... I haven't heard you really speak on it. Yeah, I never actually had the chance. And also, too, like, I just didn't want to, like, have any backlash or worry about it. But, like, now at my age and everything, I'm just like, it is what it is. Things yeah. happen. Now I'm, like, open to talk about it. Yeah. But before I get into it all crazy, like, just let you guys know, I'm cool with Barra. Like, I actually have his phone number. Like, we cool. Like, we good. Okay. It is what it is. Like, we good. That's good. But there is things that should be talked about. And when I got... When I first heard about the whole um, barracks letting like actual amateurs and just random people, as they, they were called Joes, yeah, it was Battle of Barracks Seven Pros versus Joes. Yeah. And to get into that, did you ever try to get into that? It was a uh, no, nah, the don't... Nike app. You had to like play games of skates on the Nike app to get accepted. I and, like, think they, I kind of tried. They uh, they basically would see how many people like how many people could win X amount of game of skates, and they'll pick through that. Yeah, I tried to do that, but. Um, at the time, I didn't have a good phone with good internet service. Damn. No, no luck, no chance. Yeah. Like, Damn, missed my shot. Yeah. Excuse me. Twist to make me burp. No, yeah, <laughs> I'm over here trying to prevent that too. And again, guys, if the battery dies, we just will keep the camera on him until he finishes his story because we about to really get into it. That. Continue. So a few months go by and now I'm, because uh, Battle Barracks happened, uh, Battle Barracks 7 happened when I was a senior in high school. Yeah. And then right when I graduated, I was like 18 years old. It was like around August. They made the first post. They're like, oh, Battle for America coming soon. They didn't give no details. They just said that. Yeah. Uh, like a month, like a couple weeks later, they uh, post another thing. Like we're having eight stops. Mm -hmm. And there was um, seven stops in the U.S. And then yeah. one stop in London. Okay. And uh, That's random as hell. That is in London. Then uh, they uh, they announced like, all right, we're going to have six, um, the seven stops and whatnot. And then... Yeah. Basically, post your best flat ground footage and um, tag the skate shop nearest you. And the shops that were nearest to me was Sacramento and San Francisco. Yeah. For San Francisco, it was FTC board shop, Sacramento. I don't know exactly, to be honest. But Sean was in the Sacramento one. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So and you yeah. went to the San Francisco one there, right? Well, I was tagging both of them until I started watching that. Because I became a little skate nerd where I watched every single video, every single hashtag to make sure, like, see, like, all right, who who's posting what? And like, That's... I, smart not only that though like smart so this is the thing with people like people don't understand why i get so like like into deep with me is that i made sure i made it a reason where if i don't get picked this is bullshit because i did every single trick i watched every single video and i afterwards when i went over the videos that i did i posted over 177 176 tricks all like every day i've just filmed flat ground every day yeah. i just went at it until they announced the winner yeah. Like the day they announced like the winner about like uh, the because it was a total of eight stops. Each stop got 16 contestants mm -hmm. and only 16. So uh, I made sure I did everything I could do. And the day they announced the winner, I even had a video ready to post. And that video was like 
it was already off the top. Mm -hmm. And then once they announced like, oh, I got in, um, my friends were like, don't post it, don't post it. Those are your next like bangers because obviously it don't matter no more. But yeah. at the time I did switch gazelle hill flip, which is like <laughs> the switch big hill. That's ridiculous. And then you land like the pivot yeah, way, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the Luan Oliveira. Very difficult. I did that <laughs> one. Um, front three pop lay flip. Uh, I believe Nolly front side full flip or like backside full flip. You do switch front side full ground. flip. It was a couple of like yeah, one, a switch double tray. This nigga crazy. <laughs> and uh, so I just didn't, I didn't post those. And um, once I got accepted, I was like, all right, cool. And then I started going through the hashtags again. And I come across this one dude, his name, um, Nigel Jones brought him up, Ryan Guzzo. I think I remember him that, talking about that. that. Um, he rides for um, Vi or Ryan Galant's company. That guy is so good. Well, yeah. this is the reason why the barracks hate me because of the tricks that I chose to do. Yeah. Like, well, I can't take it back. I, I don't want to say hate. All right, wrong word to say. This is why the barracks don't really, they're not fond of me, you say. And, uh, yeah. All right, That's um, a synonym. Yeah. <laughs> Can you pronounce that again? Cinnamon. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but, um, yeah, I came across Ryan Guzzo, and this guy's doing, they're called toe flips. Like using your, they're not pressure flips because pressure flips in the pocket of the board. Yeah, toe yeah. flips is on the concave. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this guy's doing toe vario, toe backside flip, toe big flip, toe flip revert, toe flip full flip, like all these toe flips. And like at this time, I never knew. Like I like pressure flips, I like under flips, I like Casper flips. I never knew what a toe flip was. So when I saw that, I was just like, I focused on all these other tricks, but I didn't know about this trick. And I was like, damn. And he got accepted for the San Francisco one. Hmm. So I was like, if I have to come against this guy, like, he's going to win me. Like, yeah. I don't know how to do any of these things. Yeah. So I did what I could do to learn those tricks. Didn't, didn't get close. Did not know how to do them. Fuck. And then it came for the day for San Francisco. And I went. And uh, it was only four rounds I had to win because it was top two. I was getting an all-expense paid trip to the barracks for the finals. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty cool. Um, first round, I forgot the guy's name, and then second round, I beat Garrett Jenner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck that nigga. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's funny. No, but <laughs> yeah, that was like, and at the time, he was like, his YouTube was like just pop. No, I yeah, want to yeah. say just popping off, but like he, I, he was getting up there. Like, and shout out to him because he's a piece of shit. I, I used to watch his pissed. stuff too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I won him second round. I was like stoked. I was like, no way, I just beat this dude. Like, yeah. and I know who he was. So you felt more accomplished too. Yeah, I felt more, stoked yeah. as fuck. And then this whole time, I. I was watching um, Ryan Guzzo and then not realizing the guy that I had to play at the end was a whole nother Ryan. Mm. And I didn't watch not one game of his. Damn. So when I played him, I was like, dude, who's this guy? I don't know what bag of tricks he has. He gets me to T and, no. and, and he has nothing. No. And I was just like, no way, I'm going to lose. Yeah. And he does a fakie bigger flip on me. And the first try did not go well. Yeah. Second try, I got it. I was like, oh, sick, got it. Thank God. And then he did Nolly Big Hill. And then same thing, second try. I barely got it. I was like, no yeah. way. He met, he messes up. And then once he messes up, I was able to come back and I actually took the dub. I, I won that one. So I made it to the finals with Alan Garcia. Shout out Alan Garcia. He is sick. He funny. got a cool ass name. Yeah, he's cool. He's from uh, Hollister. Or no, not Hollister. Uh, he's, from, he's from up north. He's from up north. A little oh, close okay. to the bay. But um, he's the one I believe that Tommy had a toe flip because... He was doing them like good. Like he was doing them sick. He knew how to toe flip. He knew how to difficult flip. He knew how to um pressure flip. Shit. He knew how to do all those things. So mm. like when it came to the uh came to the finals at the barracks, I had two um theories. Either they're gonna have all these 16 skaters play 16 pros. Now it's gonna be Battle for America. They made like instead of like pros versus Joes, they bring Battle for America winners into Battle of the Barracks eight. Yeah. And I had that theory, or maybe they just take all these guys to the barracks, and then we battle it out, and the winner of us goes into battle at the barracks eight, maybe yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then at the uh in San Francisco, at the time the barracks filmer told me the winner for Battle for America goes to Battle the Barracks Eight. And when Amazing. I heard that, I was like, Okay. And I just looked at the how many game of skates there is yeah. in the in the bracket. Okay. So now that means I'm I have my foot in the door. And all I need to do is win maybe four or five game of skates. I'm in Battle of Barracks 8. That's the way I looked yeah. at it. I didn't care about who I was playing. I just thought, I have to win this many games. I'm in Battle of Barracks 8. Yeah. 
So my mind is now focused. I'm getting Battle of Barracks 8. Like, I'm like, I'm looking forward to it. I'm stoked. I'm hyped. I'm like, all right, let's do this. And uh, once we go back home, like, I'm now, I'm back in San Paulo after San Francisco. I'm just waiting for, like, you know, Battle of Barracks 8 coming. And when San Francisco happened, I believe that was in September. Mm -hmm. And then October comes, and then this is where it gets a little, like, a little dark because... It's a little side story because this is where it gets into um, yeah. some things that happened where basically uh, I'll get into the short, the short story about it that yeah. uh, it was on Halloween and one of my friends was uh, under the influence of something and he was lost. So I did what I did. Um, I be big brother. I go find him. And mind you this, he was with other group of friends before and yeah. they just did, weren't watching him. So they kind of like, they left him do his thing. And then I was with a certain, I was with a group of friends. I get a phone call. And uh, so I get a phone call that my friend like, oh, it was over here, this and that. I'm like, oh, fuck. And it's on Halloween, like we're getting candy and stuff. Even though I was 18, I was with my homies. Like we're literally, yeah. we're still skaters. We're literally, we're just going down the block trying to get candy. Yeah, I'll do the same shit at that and, time. Uh, we get that phone call and the friends that I are with, I looked at all of them like, hey, like so-and-so is like, we got to go. And this was crazy because this part matters in the story that like, they just basically say like, oh, we don't give a fuck. Like that's their problem. I was like, nah, mm. we got to go. Luckily, two of them follow me and we're going. And then I get a call. As soon as I'm going to go take care of that one friend, I get another call. So-and-so passed out on the street. And I'm like, wait, what? And like, yeah. And then they left this and that. I'm like, Oh damn! Now I gotta go into action. Now I got two friends that are need saving. So the two friends are coming. Damn. I tell those two friends like, "Hey, get so and so right here. I'm gonna go right here, which is the right a block from each other." And I get down like I'm the more experienced skater of the three of us that are going to go save them, or you know try to save their asses. And um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, no worries. I I haul it down the road. I get down and I pass the first friend. I tell him, "Wait there, they're coming." I pass them and the one, I go to the one that's passed out on the street. I pick them up, put them against the fence, like in a shadow area. And uh, so I have them out of the, the roads viewing because he was on a, like a pretty busy road and mm -hmm. passed out. And um, eventually the other two friends, they come, or the other three friends, they come through and they're waiting or they were all waiting. And uh, next thing, like um, this town's a little active at times. And at, at that time that it was some shit was popping off. And um, this car pulls up and like, it's one thing about those one moments, you're just right there and the car pulls up, <clears throat> pulls out and they get out of the car and then they realize, oh, and they look at me, Caballo? Oh, man, dude, we thought you were in. I'm like, oh, no, nah, we're good. We're like, no, homie right here, he's all fucked up. It's now, he's like, yeah. he's like, oh, all right, we're for sure. We're like, hey, uh, you guys need a ride? We're like, oh, no, nah, I already called his dad. He's going to come pick him up right now. Yeah. He's like, oh, for sure, hey, keep through chat tonight. It's a, it's a little hot. And I was like, all right, for sure, for sure no worries. We good, we good. No, so I'm not, I'm paying no business. Like, and I'm like, mind you, there's a several of the friends that are like, they're yeah. pretty little turn. Yeah. And uh, I was like, basically the only sober one there. Well, no, take the back. The two other friends that came with me were mm -hmm. the only sober ones there. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my focus is on my friend that's on the ground unconscious. And I have him sitting up so he doesn't like pass out. And uh, this uh, other guy, um, he's just right there standing up. Like not really, he's there, but he's not there. And I give one of the friends, like, money. Hey, go get him water, please. Like, go get him water. He go get some water. And we're still waiting for him to get picked up. And I just see, like, the corner of my eye, these two guys coming up. Pro club sweaters. Don't look like nothing, whatever. And um, as they come up, I just hear, hey, what's up? Where are you from? I'm thinking some basic guys, like, you know, whatever, mm. cholos. And I write, I just respond like, oh no, we ain't from nowhere. And like, we just, you know, my homies fucked up. We're trying to take care of him. I'm like, I'm barely like looking at him, like not trying to give him no business. And uh, he right away is, all right, give me all your shit. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I'm about to get punk. Yeah. So I turn around. I was like, wait, what? I stand up, and the dude has a knife. Like, I used a good like this big at my stomach, and I'm like, mm -mm. oh shit. And like, he has his face covered. And shit. I was just like, at the time, I just pulled my phone. I was like, that's what I got. They started booking everyone. It was two guys, and. Uh, as he's booking them, like, he go after he books everyone, yeah. he goes to my friend on the floor that's messed up, and then he kind of, like, drops him. As he drops, I go tell him, like, hey, relax. And then he turns around, and he comes at me, like, 
uh, I told him and relax, like to go down. I wasn't trying to hit him. I was like, hey, relax. He's a food. And then he, just, he thinks I was trying to do something. He right away swung at me with the knife. Like he tried to give me my throw or something. No. He missed. I back up. I was like, yo, I'm not doing that. I'm pretty sure he got pissed that he missed. So then he kept coming at me. Boom, boom, boom. And I can't, I honestly, I lost count how many times he swung on me. But simultaneously, I could just hear the other guy to my friend, fucking him, give me your shit. And this guy, he was the one that was turned that I tried to go for yeah. in the beginning. And uh, this dude's like, and I hear it in my voice. Like, I still hear it in my mind, like, where I could hear him, like, I don't have, I, 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 and like, so as this guy swinging at me, trying to stick me, I hear my homie straight up getting stick. No. And this guy's just going out and pa, 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 pa. And I'm just like, oh, and like, eventually he stops swinging at me. And then he freaking just turns around. And the friend that's right there, the one that's kind of out of it, he mm-hmm. just socks him once, knocks him out. And then the other guy comes from around the car, around the car. They both take off running away. And I'm just like, oh shit. And then they got my phone. So at the time I thought one of my friends lived across the street. Well, he used to live there. Yeah. And I just ran right across the street. I like, I knocked on the door. I was like calling his name. He didn't answer. So I, I just opened the door and it was just some random Mexican family. Like they were just having fucking dinner. Like they were just right there having yeah. family dinner. And I was just like, yo, my bad, my bad. Like my, my friend used to live here. Blah, blah, blah. I just got robbed. I think my friend just got stabbed. I, I need, can you guys call 911? And then, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come in. And I just ran out the door. I closed the door and I get to the front and two older friends are right there. Uh, two guys, the two older bikers that used to go to the skate park, they're right there in the front. They see me, hey, what's up, Kawhi? Yeah. And like at this point, I'm kind of like crying. I'm walking back. I'm like, fuck, I don't know what's going on. I'm just like, and then they're like, dude, someone just got killed. I'm like, what do you mean? There's a puddle, there's a guy in a puddle of blood. And I look over there and it's, my homie just no. in a big puddle of blood. And I'm just like, nah. No. That, and I just like, and at this point, there's, when it happened, no one was outside. Of course, when stuff happens, everyone outside. Yeah. I kind of lost it. I started screaming at everyone. What the fuck you doing out here? Mind your fucking business. Go yeah. back in your house. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Where the fuck were you? Da, da, da. Whatever. We end up having to go to the station and we all end up having to get picked up by, um, by yeah. somebody. And um, when I got picked up, they, I told my grandma, I was, like, I was like, I can't go home. I need to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. At this time, no one went to the hospital but me that night. And I stayed until they said, like, oh, he's stable. It was just me, one, uh, another homie, his cousin, yeah. the brother, and uh, his parents. No one was there, only us. And when they finally said it was like at 2 in the morning, like, oh, he's stable. He's good for right now. Um. Eventually, we went back home. The next day, gathered all the boys. We got together. We went to the hospital, went back, check on him. I was the only person to go inside the room to actually, like, check yeah. on him. Like, And I was like, oh, shit, he's alive. All right, cool. I was like, blessing, like, fuck. The fool got stuck in total. It was like 11 or 12 times. Oh, my like, God. Front, back. And after that happened, people in town started saying it was my fault. Oh which God. made no fucking sense where I'm like how is that my fault and yeah. people started threatening me that they wanted to kill me and mind you like it's just funny that like people that would like mess with this guy and pick on him started saying like oh we gonna get you now cause you know it's your fault that it happened I'm like how is it my fault that made no sense and like yeah. it got to a point where I didn't want to leave my house yeah. and I got scared I was like shit like People are threatening my life and stuff. I was like, damn, like, I'm not even affiliated like that. I just skateboard. And it was just bad. I was like, shit. So the only thing I was looking forward was, like, battle the barracks. Like, I get to, I'm going to go to the barracks. I'm going to just skate. Yeah. And uh, that's why I had to say the story because at the time, like, I'm going through this shit on the sidelines. And uh, I can't even skate. Like, I'm trying to skate, but I can't. Yeah. And uh, people were threatening me left and right. And I got to the point where I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. And I started telling them, like, you guys want to do something? I was telling because my friends would come. They, they were the ones, like, they would go to school, and then they get told by so-and-so, da, 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 yeah. and they come to me telling me, oh, yeah, they get so-and-so's going to do this and that. And I'm like. So now you're living in fear. Yeah, I'm just like, And you got I this contest even... coming up. Oh, my God. Like. And you worry about your friend at the same time. And then people start getting his ear that it was my fault. Oh, and no. then it was just all bad business. But. Once uh, once he was able to recover, and thank God he's alive, mm-hmm. and he was able to come back as a warrior, he um, 
we were able to talk. Things were good. And then he made it clear, like, no, people st stopped saying things. But it was just weird. It was real messed up and real, like, that they were trying to say this type of things about me. And uh, eventually that once I was able to come out and I was able to um, go skate more, yeah, uh, it still wasn't the same because no matter what, when I left my house, when I left the skate park, no matter what, when I was outside, I yeah. had a knife on me. I had a yeah. knife, screwdriver, whatever it was. And it wasn't just in my pocket. Like, no, I had it in my hand, on my like personal, like, and I had it the yeah, blade out. Worried. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was at PTSD. I was like, hell no. Like, yeah. no one's gonna catch us. And uh it was just it was bad, bad business. But luckily that um well, I shouldn't say business, take that back, because it was no business. Like, yeah, yeah. it was literally just wrong place, wrong time. But yeah. thankfully we we're there because like you know, like he's alive still. Yeah. Like it just it sucks. It's a but miracle. Once I uh once I was able to come out, I started skating, I started like not caring no more. The barracks was around the corner, so I was getting ready for that. And my bad I went off on the rails on that part, but it's just No, that the was the barracks good. don't understand that like or not just the barracks, just the industry don't understand like some of these skaters are going through some shit behind behind closed doors. Yeah. And, like, when you shut doors for them and, like, shutting the doors over some, like, bogus reasons, like, you don't even know that that little thing is what's keeping them up. Yeah. Keeping them still trying. Yeah. And uh, so I had all the, like, the the looking forward to go to the barracks. And at the time, it was the only person I had in contact with the barracks. It was, you know, Chase? The yeah. swimmer Chase? Mm -hmm. It wasn't him, but it was his brother, Clayton. Okay. And um, I remember he picked me up at, at the barracks when I finally was able to go out there for the finals and stuff, he picked me up and he was taking me to the hotel and I opened up to him about my whole situation and stuff, like about what had happened to me, like how I haven't been skating and like, I'm so happy to be out here. And he kind of just like, just kind of brushed it off, didn't really care too much, which I didn't expect him to like, oh, feel all bad for me. I was just like, um, I was just opening up like, you know, hey man, yeah. like, I'm just happy to be out here. Yeah. And it was just like, okay, well, I kind of wasted my breath even talking to you. Mm -hmm. And then mm -mm. once the whole thing happened, like the the finals, the first day was cool though, because the first day we we're there was Friday, and they took us to the courthouse. We we're able to skate. We we're able to. Um, we got a lot of footage. That was fun. We filmed a lot of stuff, um, but a lot of stuff didn't get get put out as usual when that stuff happens. But yeah. we're at the courthouse getting some footage, and I did a five zero finger flip across the ledge the whole thing yeah the, from the yeah. it was like one of the long blue ones yeah. and if i will finger flip on that barrel hill crooks uh i got some clips on those and um saturday was the finals and when saturday came the morning before we, the games happened uh i started watching eric costin's videos every single video of eric costin from battle of the barracks one to seven I watched every single one of his videos that morning of the finals. And every single game Eric Costin does, he does circus tricks. Pressure flips. Hell yeah, he flips, does. Like, all these, like, I call them circus tricks. Yeah. So it's like, if one of the greatest of all time can do this, what well, makes it wrong for anyone else to do it? Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, cool. And so when it came down to the finals of the barracks, the person who you qualified with at the stop, that's who you played first round. Yeah. Remember I said Alan Garcia knew pressure flips, knew toe flips, knew yeah. all those? Mm -hmm. He was able to do any of that. So I was like, I can't play him the way like my strategy was to yeah. play, to like to win. So I was like, I just gotta go toe to toe with him. Yeah. And when Brian mentioned like I, how I had like switch trays, switch fronts of it, switch backs, flips, all these, I had a bag of tricks. Yeah, you do. So with him, like we actually went at it. Like we fuck boom, boom, boom. He did a fake ghetto bird on me. I landed that which I've landed very few times, but I landed in a game at the barracks. So I was like, yeah. I'll never forget that. You did a fakey ghetto bird on me. I landed that. Fakey half cap double flip. I landed that. Crazy. Um, but eventually I beat that dude on a laser flip on flat. Mm -hmm. So for them to say, like, I just won on pressure flips, it's like, bro, you obviously never seen the videos and now the videos are not able to be there, but I won them on a laser flip. Second round, I played Cody Witt. Shout out Cody Witt. He's beast as hell. You yeah. know who Cody Witt? I Think yeah, he has yeah. all those late flips and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's crazy. He's real good. Um, I beat that dude on. What was it? Oh, actually, no. I beat him on a toe backside flip. Okay. But like, 
um he went a few times and he actually like he busted some tricks and uh like he did front three pop on me i did front three pop he did nolly lay flip on me i did nolly lay flip mm -hmm. tray flip sex change i did tray flip sex change. you got the defense you're doing yeah, legit like, shit i was doing everything that he did he switched hard flip i did switch hard flip nolly yeah. hard flip i did nolly hard flip <clears throat> my bad y'all the camera you know what i mean like i said again not the most professional podcast but y'all enjoy this shit for some reason and we left off with cody wait and it was going it was it was a deep story too i apologize so he was doing he was doing nollie late flips and what else yeah he had a few bag of tricks and i on defense i still was getting them and uh, eventually um that game i did end it off with the toe flip i did a toe backside flip and yeah. i won that one following game i played my p hour mm -hmm. and uh he uh he landed a couple of the tricks that i wasn't expecting him to land and then eventually with that game though i won him on a pot shove at late flip mm. like i didn't win on a like it was i mean it's a circus trick but still pot shove a late flip in a game of skate and i mean you see what they're doing now on the berries they're doing a bunch of circus tricks yeah and i took that one and when it came to the final game i played spencer brown and if you ever you do know, do you know who spencer brown is he's from i think baltimore but he's beast. It's crazy. Manuals, ledges. Like, you got to look into him. Crazy ass skater. Mm -hmm. And I won the Rochambeau. And so I took it off with a pressure flip. Yeah. Uh, pressure flip revert. You would say pressure flip sex change. Mm -hmm. I would say more revert. So it's S, K. And then I did a, a difficult flip, which is people know it as four flip, dolphin flip. Yeah. Uh, I did, got that for A. And then I did a... a toe burial got him to t and then i did a toe backside flip he landed that second try and then i came at him back with the double difficult flip double forward flip and i beat him on that so it was literally six tricks i won the final game and excuse yeah, me worst moment to burp damn <laughs> yeah, it's damn twisted tees but um yeah once i won that i had a bunch of homies there that i was all I was yeah. at least like 20 plus deep. Yeah. They all freaking jumped me. They're all, yeah, 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 screaming about it. And um, I ended up taking that one. And I even got the crown for it. Oh, shit. Sorry it's about that. Good. But right there, I don't know if you can see. It says yeah. Battle for America. This was like their trophy they gave me. Lamont was saying this looks like from Burger King. Yeah, put it on. Put it on your head. <laughs> <laughs> I've never wore this shit. No. Hey. King of America. <laughs> I'll rep it hard. Fuck it. And, uh, but shout out. I got yeah, it. It did like some Burger King um, shit. During that weekend, though, it was only like the employees of the barracks. Like, Barra wasn't there and stuff. Yeah. And uh, um, I was told afterwards, like, I was going to be in Battle of the Barracks 8. Yeah. And then time goes by and Christmas comes around. Or Christmas Eve, I would say. And I get a text at night from Alan Garcia. Hey, vote for me to be in Battle of the Barracks 8. I was like, all right, cool. I went on this, my phone, voted for him. But on the phone, they only show a certain amount of skaters. They don't show everyone. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I go on the computer, which was the following day on Christmas. And this day, though, I get a text from two different friends that are out of town. Like, oh, I'm voted, I just voted for you to be in Battle of Barracks 8. And I just got a funny feeling. So I hit up the guys at the barracks like, hey, I just got these two random texts. I'm being Battle of the Barracks. Like, what's up with that? And the dude who I was in contact with there, Chase's brother, ends up replying back to me this big old thing like oh as it was uh a, a previous years um the uh, previous champions automatically in as in not just you it's gonna be Paragigas, chris cole cody cepeda names all these like pro skaters that, like have all this recognition like it's not just you that has to be voted in these guys have to be voted in as well which made no sense yeah. like i went through a thing that where you get, i went through a whole tournament yeah. went through the process of it and like you guys told me the winner of this gets to be in it yeah. then i get told this on christmas day after i just said like you know what i'm dealing with why not and like it's just yeah. crazy that they had to push me like they told me that and i I, told, I actually opened up to my I responded to my like, you, you don't understand what you're doing to me right now like what this means like and basically just didn't really care and i was like all right well that's fine that's cool like it is what it is and so I had to get voted into it, which didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I ended up finding out later, and I don't know how true this is or what, but uh, uh, eventually, like, because, you know, obviously there's business sides to it, but the voting didn't matter. They just, like, picked who certain skaters are going to be in it. And, like, yeah. a certain company, I guess, paid off to first certain skaters to be in it. Yeah. And 
Um, it does make sense because if it would the voting system would have worked like Jeff was on that fucking voting thing. And at the time, Jeff, he objected uh, Cesare. Yeah. He was killing it. Like, there's no way he wouldn't have got voted into it. Of course. It. Jeff, Day Wong Song, Tony mm-hmm. Hawk, mm-hmm. Rob Dyrdek, like mm-hmm. most iconic names. Like, anyone's going to click, oh, I want to see that. Hell yeah. They're going yeah, yeah. to vote for those guys. Mm. Instead, like, I'm not saying the guys who got to be in Battle of the Barracks 8 should not have been in there. But, um, you know, like, at the time, they, they, the Rippers are in there, but you know, these names would have been for sure voted in mm-hmm. at, rather than those names yeah. because if that's, the voting was real yeah. and it wasn't the case. And uh, it sucked though because there was four skaters that got chosen to be in Battle of the Barracks 8 from Battle mm-hmm. for America, which was mm-hmm. Sean Rodriguez. <laughs> he got out from uh, Nolly Big Hill from Tom Asta. Yeah. Then Kevin Ramsey got out from a barrel flip from Chris Jocelyn. Spencer Brown, the one who I beat, got out with the Nolly Lay flip from yeah. P Rod. And then Mike Pewauer got out with the Nolly Big Inward Hill from Cody Cepeda. And at the time, like I had all those <laughs> tricks and like people could say I sound petty, but it's like, dude, like I worked so hard and like the for the people who got like I won that event and then Very these guys square. got to be in it. Yeah. And then they lost on tricks where I'm like, damn, dude, I could have busted those out. Like yeah. it was just like, that sucks. Like, whatever. And Fast forward, I almost get a chance to be in Battle Barracks 13 through mm. finals fight night. And that was the whole thing with Karayuma. That, I don't know. Take that. Erase that. It was not Karayuma. I think it was a... It was a, a streaming thing. Caffeine app. There you go. Caffeine. Yeah, That's yeah, why I got the the, the C. Uh, it was yeah, caffeine. Yes, it was about. the caffeine app. Yeah. Excuse me again. I burp a lot. <laughs> and uh, the caffeine app. And... Um, the barracks hit me up like saying like, oh, you've been chosen because you have to post flat ground again and tag the hashtag with the battle of the barracks for the next gen. At the time, I didn't want to do it, but RIP Anthony Medina, shout out to him. He's the one that pushed me. Hey, bro, come on, let's go film this. So mm. I was like, all right, whatever. Like I just got out of uh, work. So uh, we went to go film a little flat ground thing and my submission actually came through. They, they picked it and uh, they hit me up saying like, oh, tell all your friends and family uh, tune in for the broadcast, you know? And so what I do, I tell my friends and family, tune in for it. Yeah. And they're going by a voting bracket again, but this is a live stream. And you have to like, the videos will come up like, all right, this skater versus this skater. And you have to vote. And it came to a point where there was two skaters and it was obvious one skater was like better than the other, but the votings went for the not the so great skater. And that yeah. skater went to the next round. So I was like, oh, this is real voting. Like it's going to work like that. And each round, I got to the voting. I, I got the votes, got the votes, got the votes. And when it came to the end, it was a Damien something and then Damien this. And then it was between me and one of the Damien's. And I got the most votes. I got 22 votes, I think it was. And the other guy got like eight votes. Yeah. And then Barra put his input in. I'm pretty sure if people have seen it from Brian's video. Like yeah. Brian had the screen record of it. And uh, he basically like outvoted me. and. I didn't get into it, and it was just like, damn. Wait, so like, you said Bear put his, put his what in? What he? Uh, his two cents in, as in like, yeah. well, he spoke his piece why I shouldn't have been in that, uh, yeah. in the Battle of the Barracks, which was funny because, why well, I say it's funny because he said that guy had a well-rounded bag of tricks when, yeah. again, like I'm like a little skate nerd where I watch certain things like, okay, I want to make sure I have a good thing, and yeah. I made sure I did. Uh, there's four stances: goofy or regular. Fakey, Nolly, Switch. Yeah. So I made sure I did all <clears throat> two tricks of all four and then two miscellaneous tricks. Yeah. So I had a look. I, that was a well-rounded bag of tricks. And all my tricks were in Tic Tac. They were a nice rolling. They were good. And then he tried to say my tricks were slow, no pop, no style. Or I'm not sure if exactly that was uh, no style, but he said no pop and it was slow. But then I was like, go back to that guy's videos. He did six, um, what was it? Five fakey tricks one regular trick uh one nolly trick and then he did no switch so and then a couple of tricks kind of rolled on the ground so i was like how are you gonna like but then also he was wearing karayuma like Mm. all up so i was like i guess that's in a business way and then someone else in the background like um had mentioned like you know what damien versus damien would be a good good uh showcase so then they did the uh, Damien versus Damien and 
uh, they did a vote on live thing, like, okay, who do you think should be? And they went through like the whole um, crew that was on scene. They're like, all right, who do you vote? Boom, 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 boom. And then I got outvoted from the crew to be in. So they voted. That's fucked. And I see where they were going for like the the business where, yeah, I guess Damon versus Damon, that would be cool. But that wasn't the thing. The yeah. thing was we vote, we see who goes in. And I got voted to go to fight night. Yeah. And that kind of got me out. And then they were saying about, oh, we'll bring you back for a pressure flip battle. And little did they know, though, you guys blacklisted me back in 2014. So I stopped doing pressure flips. Yeah. Like, I don't really do pressure flips no more or toe flips or any of that. Like, it fucked you up. Yeah, like, I don't do none of that. And, like, yeah. I felt like that was kind of, like, a little stab. Like, damn, you really going to throw that at me? Yeah, like, 100%. That, they yeah, know what the fuck cool. they doing. But, <sighs> yeah, that was just, like, it was real weird. It was real weird. Yeah. But, like I had mentioned before, me and Bear are cool. Like, I had talked to him in person. And how did that conversation uh, go? It came out, like... It was good. Like, he actually, like... Because, again, like, I didn't know this, that, like... You people just think because when someone owns a business, they're really there. But reality of it, like he's from Chicago, like he's yeah. he's he's going back and forth, so he doesn't know exactly what's going on at all times over there. So yeah. when I actually talked to him, I was like, all right, you know, like all right, I get it now. Like I can't be like, and then when I was younger, like I said like I was a little angry ass kid. I was pissed off, so I took it like real hard. And like obviously there was things going on with me, yeah. but um, he uh, once we talked it out, we were cool. And uh, at Battle of the Barracks, it was a uh, Battle of the Barracks 13. That's kind of funny. When Jamie won, I saw him and like we're talking. And I was like, hey, uh, what's up with my flag though? Like, I don't got a flag up yet. And he's like, good question. We got to talk about that. So that's a conversation to happen soon. But we're on good terms now. Like, yeah. so we haven't got to the conversation exactly about the whole barracks thing, but he did inform me about like, he wasn't in charge about certain things, what was going on. And like the fact that he's going back and forth. Mm. And, um, I'm also throwing an event for my friend that who passed away. Yeah. Speak on that. And, um, that's going to be a game of skate here mm. in Santa Paula skate park. And it's yeah. going to be on March 23rd. Okay. And, it's for anyone to show up, you know, game escape, best trick, bunch of other things. And he actually like, cause Barra, um, Anthony used to work at the barracks for people to know. They're just not bringing this up. And, um, Barra's, uh, going to be involved with it. He already said he was going to help out and whatnot. We have an event going on and we have a lot of sponsors coming through a lot of support, a lot of help. It's a community event, nonprofit. So we're looking forward for a lot of people coming out. And hopefully you come out. I'm gonna be there. Participate. I'm gonna be there. Are you gonna play though? Uh, if this video gets, hold on, be turn the camera. This, hold on, this yeah, video. Hold on, we gonna turn this around. If I could, fuck it, turn this up. Damn, sorry y'all. Jesus Christ, my bad. Let's start the professional podcast. <laughs> if uh, this video gets a thousand, no, how much? Five hundred likes, thousand. Whatever you want to say. A thousand likes, I will play that game of skate and we'll yeah, vlog it. You'll like it a thousand times. You got to make a bunch of accounts. And uh, we'll do that. And I'll play that motherfucking game of skate. But if I win, I don't want to hear shit from nobody again about if I still skate or not. But, <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. What if you play me first round? <laughs> play you? First round. Fuck. Hold on. We set this camera back. Uh the unprofessional podcast. Uh, what you mean? Play you first round? Yeah, first you round. You gonna make it that difficult for me? I'll still whip your ass, nigga. I will see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see. Nah, but to end it off, uh, I, pre I appreciate you, you know, speaking. And, and my bad, the I'm like all over the place and like sometimes some things could have been said a little better. This is like one of my first times ever actually speaking on this and yeah. actually like a big platform as Lamont Hole. Like, I don't think he understands like how like Surreal this feels Like I was telling him Like off camera How I grew up watching This dude's videos And there's Appreciate certain videos. There's a one video Where I'm pretty sure He don't even... I guess I'll just say right now That It was a clip at Hawthorne Skate Park You do huh. a finger flip on flat And then hard flip back lip On the flat bar I'm finger flipping On flat ground Yeah and you're wearing A beanie all like <laughs> Damn <laughs> Just retarded <laughs> Yeah you had that uh, Yeah you had yeah. that Cone beanie What but... about that clip that was like when I saw that, I liked that. 
I like those like those weird bag of chicks where yeah. you don't. I, I want to see those chicks where you you're not gonna see in any video. Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, what the hell? You could flip your board with your hand. <laughs> yeah. And then obviously I know what a hard flip was in the back lip. Yeah. I was like, and then he did that trick. Yeah. Oh no. I, was to I got see, and then I was just so in like I started watching all his videos and shit. Yeah. And still the chick I was saying earlier, a goal finger flip foot plant that got to be done. Yeah. I still haven't done that. That's crazy. That's good. But now nah, we gonna do a part two, y'all, because the cameras keep turning off and shit. But I feel like. You really got to say your piece on this. And everybody go follow him on Instagram and his YouTube channels in the description. And, you know, you, you know, hit him up and talk about what he just spoke on because it takes a lot for somebody to, you know, let me flip the camera to me. Hold on. <clears throat> it takes a lot for somebody to open up like that and, you know, say some deep shit like that. Um, but yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, guys. I Appreciate you guys watching this video and I appreciate you being on the podcast. Appreciate you for coming out. Part two coming soon. We traveling for this motherfucking podcast, y'all. We all the way in Ventura with this bitch. All right, no, Santa Paul. Santa Paul, yeah. Santa Paul, my bad. Grew up, <laughs> grew up in Pyro. Oh, no. All right, take that. <laughs> yeah. Pop. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs>